I'm willing to bet that you never realised just how much you needed a video game with a tiny karate kitten as the playable character. Before we go any further, yeah, he can also ride horses. First announced in 2017, Biomutant immediately caught my eye with its unusual take on character creation and beautiful open world environment with a breath of the wild atmosphere. The game will be released on May 25th, 2021, and I have had the pleasure of getting acquainted with one of my most anticipated RPGs of all time for the past two weeks now. It's fair to say right off the bat that I have been thoroughly enjoying my adventures galloping across the broken yet beautiful world. However, there are a few things you should know if you plan to dive in yourself. I'd like to note that while this is a story spoiler free review, I will be going into some detail about the various mechanics and what the first few hours of the game has to offer. We humans eventually reached the point where we damaged our world beyond repair. Hazardous chemicals dumped in the ocean massively polluted the air and life as we know it came to an end. Because if there's one theme we all love in the year of our Lord 2021, it's apocalyptic biologically hazardous wastelands where you need special gear to travel anywhere. From the ashes came new life, new species that adapted to the new world. Among them is our protagonist. The nameless mammalian hero, whom I affectionately nicknamed Sausage, has his own troubled past, seeking revenge against the great beast who tore apart his family, when he is thrown into a much bigger adventure that affects the fate of their entire world. As the game is set in a polluted world that has had to evolve to survive, your character too has to quite literally evolve to adapt to the world around it as they explore it. When you start out, you'll have a choice of classes and specialisations, which affect your character's looks and his stats. A hero who relies on quick wit and complicated spells requires high intellect, which is reflected in an adorably large head and small stature. Whereas a hero that relies more on brawn than brains will have large muscles, move a little slower, and have no real need for a large skull for their smaller brain. Now here's a really interesting new take on character creation in an RPG. We have to decide what's more important to us, looking a certain way or having our optimal stat spread to suit our preferred playstyle. As you progress through the world, you will also find opportunities to mutate yourself even further. Combat works on a basis of melee, ranged, spells and combos. Each time you level up your character, you can choose to invest in your preferred method of combat. There really are no wrong answers with what you choose to level up. Everything is viable if you choose to invest points in it, and the combinations are endless. It really is a game where you can try everything out as you go along, and it never feels like you're underpowered or you need to restart. Little mini bosses and swarms of enemies are great fun for experimenting with new powers or combo attacks, and the bosses, the world eaters, feature incredibly fun fights that will test your skills to the max. You'll repair and pilot four unique vehicles to combat the four big bosses and these are super fun to control and accessorize. And they never feel too overpowered that they replace the fun of standard boots on the ground gameplay. There are three difficulty modes to cover all kinds of players. There is an easy mode for those who want to explore and discover their cutest, comfiest new game and also a hard option for those looking for more of a challenge. Personally, I gave normal mode a go, and after specialising heavily in a glass cannon spellcaster with max intellect, I can say it even feels a little bit too easy. Then again, I have been gleefully exploring every single nook and cranny I can, so take that with a pinch of salt. Progression through the world can be done at your own pace, but certain areas are locked off, Legend of Zelda style, until you obtain the proper equipment to survive while exploring them. You'll need a big strong mech suit in order to safely explore the noxious sludge wasteland to the west, and you'll need to track down a plastic radiation suit if you want to go treasure hunting in a leaking nuclear waste facility without losing the entire contents of your stomach. There's a real sense of satisfaction to just aimlessly exploring. There are plenty of side quests to take you off the beaten path, and you'll always come across fun places to explore as you scavenge for loot. 
One big positive is that, although the land is filled with high mountains and deep pits alike, there's no penalty for leaping off a cliff, whether you're on a mount or not. Unless, of course, you count the sad little cry from your goat as it falls to the floor like a ragdoll. This is lovely for someone as gravitationally challenged as myself, but also quite strange. Buy your mutant features upgrades for your little automaton companion, and one of them is a glider. While this is super fun to use, grants you some great vistas, and admittedly gets you where you want to go a lot faster than falling, it does feel a bit strange that there's no penalty for jumping off a building without it. Speaking of loot, if you love a game where you're constantly finding scrap to piece together to make upgrades, Biomutant is chock full of sparkly treasure that you'll be finding left, right and centre. Exploration is so rewarding this way. Nearly every dilapidated building has a drawer to open or a sofa to search under, where you can find new gear, healing items or scrap that you can use to craft and improve new gear. Crafting itself is very simple and satisfying and taught to you through a charming flashback. It's hilarious trying out all the different combinations to see what gives the best results and often the best results look the most ludicrous. Big shout out to my banana handled saw. The overall tone of the game is perhaps what I have enjoyed the most so far. Going in with limited knowledge of the setting and story, I was very pleasantly surprised to see that the game has an adorable fable-esque karma system and a narrator telling us your story as you go along. It gives the game a storybook fantasy feeling to it and the narrator's highly amusing nicknames for common household objects never failed to make me smile. Big shout out to my parents, my Mooma and Popsy, and the Twinkie Twang, aka an electric guitar. Back to the subject of the karma system, the game makes a big song and dance about how all of your actions have consequences and you will make decisions both big and small all throughout the game, right from the very beginning. Some spells can only be used if you have been letting the hate flow through you and others can only be used if you walk towards the light. It was a little deflating to see that you can very quickly and easily boost your aura up to max just by catching and patting or killing lots of little animals very early on, but it's still a nice feature. I'm always a huge fan of puzzles in games. There are some simple puzzles adorning objects from the once was, the old world, scattered across the world of Biomutant. Elevators, microwaves, toilets, radios all hide little puzzles that you can complete for experience and loot. The more intellect your character has, the easier these are to complete. It's a nice addition that also functions as collectibles, and there are so many different types of puzzle that you'll discover as you enter new biomes and territories that they never get old, and they even start to get pretty tricky. So level up that big brain, my rodents. Biomutant's visuals can be easily summarised in one word, and that is bright. Even though you will be exploring at night time, through bad weather and rain, and through toxic sludge at times, the overall atmosphere of the game is very bright, very beautiful and cartoonish. Max settings on PC make environments look stunning, character fur is adorably fluffy but is understandably reduced in visual quality to favour a smooth frame rate. The user interface stood out to me immediately in a very good way. It's bright and colourful, but very easy to read and understand. Audio-wise, I really loved the ambiance for all the different areas in the game. Ranging from tranquil to peril, with the ever-present soft voice of the narrator encouraging you onwards. There is, however, one very small, very painful sound effect that stood out to me so much that I feel the need to include it here. When you call your mount and sometimes when you are crafting gear, the confirmation sound effect is a very loud beep that made me go double check all the batteries in my smoke detectors. For the rest of the game being so chilled out, it's borderline uncomfortable and literally made me want to just run between places rather than call for my mount again and again. Definitely recommend lowering the volume on sound effects as one of your first ports of call in the audio settings. Biomutant has been highly anticipated for a good number of years now and I am delighted to report that it is not a disappointment. In fact, it's even better than I imagined it would be. The amusing character creator, 
the moral choices offering replayability, the build customization, crafting your ideal combat style, the beautiful, vibrant visuals and fun, quirky NPCs and narration really come together to form a wonderful package that features hours of relaxing exploration as well as addictive gameplay and a healthy dose of completionism. I highly recommend Biomutant to anyone who enjoys fantasy, RPGs, open world exploration as seen in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and a light-hearted moral karma system as seen in the Fable series. For me personally, it's a 9 out of 10. I absolutely adore it, but I would have loved to have seen even more options in the character creator and ease of access in the map overlay to set waypoints to places that don't feature a checkpoint or a quest, as well as that super annoying mount beep. Now I'm going to continue my journey with Little Sausage as he goes around peeing on lamp posts and uniting clans under his banner to save a giant pretty tree. I do hope if you decide to pick up Biomutant that you'll tell me all about your experience. I want to see all your cute characters in the Discord for sure. Thank you so much for watching, I've been Rach, be sure to subscribe for more Biomutant content, and I'll see you there.